is Saturday, October 21st, 2017. Happy Back to the Future Day. I am on my way out of Union City. Screw this place. Screw town. Screw all the people. I live in a condo community, which has its benefits. You don't have to mow a lawn. You don't have to worry about lots of things anyway. Uh, the downfalls of living in a condo community is at 8, 8 a.m. sharp on a Saturday morning, anybody can have contractors doing work starting at 8 a.m. sharp. Their trucks and pumps and noises start up and you're awake whether you want to or not. Next thing you know, your downstairs breezeway neighbor who's getting married today, congratulations by the way, Gary, they have their wedding party. Everybody's at their, in their house, in their little condo. Even though I hadn't had a solid plan to go camping, uh, getting a push from the universe through my downstairs neighbor and my neighbors across the way who are having work done to their place early on a Saturday morning. Uh, all the signs pointed to me having to get out. So that's what I'm doing. So I didn't take the motorcycle today because my jacket is on Craigslist for sale. I've only worn it a couple of times, but it doesn't fit right. And it was really stupidly expensive. So uh, I've put it on Craigslist. I can't return it because it's been worn out on a ride. So uh, I'm going to sell it, hopefully sell it, uh, so that I can invest in the version that came out just after that, which is actually a Euro fit, which I am as opposed to the American fit, uh, which is not me. Um, so I've loaded everything in the truck and according to Google, all of the streets, all the freeways were green heading out this direction, but that's obviously not the case. So thanks a lot, Google. I do have a quick question. Maybe somebody can answer this for me. What is it about people that drive with their feet on the dash. Her foot, left foot, up on the dashboard while she's operating the motor vehicle. As soon as I escape this, I'm heading east. I'm gonna go make a mad dash across the valley and I'll have my choice of which section of the Sierra to go, uh, whether it's back up 108, 120, I can go up 88. Uh, I know that we had a wave of rain, which was really nice, that came through on Thursday night. So uh, I think maybe the back side of the Sierra has got a dusting of snow, but I won't know until I get up there. And kind of scope out for maybe some winter camping on the motorcycle. I don't know how far in I can get, but I don't know, I like the idea. So. I'm gonna sit in traffic for a while and uh, figure out which direction I'm gonna go when I get there.
sometime later Getting the words wrong Wasting the meaning and losing the rhyme It's nauseous adrenaline Breaking up a dog fight like a deer in the headlights Frozen in real time I'm losing my mind It's time to move on Time to get going What lies ahead I have no way of knowing But under my feet baby Grass is growing It's time to move on Nice little clearing at a dead end. You can still hear Highway 4 up the hill off in the distance. Looks like it was target practice. There's some downed wood, dead standing. Looks like I found my spot. I dawdled a bit. It took my time getting up here, explored some forest roads that were off to the side, found a couple of duds, found a few trails that I'm not sure my truck will easily go up and come back down. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a lift kit, so that will kind of be necessary for some of these trails up here. So I've got myself a nice little clearing. Uh, there's some dead standing, but they're far enough away that I should be okay. Um, I'm up at, up at altitude. And it is only in the 40s right now. Uh, there's still light dustings of snow off in the trees from Thursday night. So I'm going to collect some wood and see what kind of stuff we got going on here. Because I'm going to use what's already here. There's a bunch of stuff right here that's already fallen. Got a, uh, a Kershaw folding saw. Uh, one of those cut on the pole. Kind of nice. Need a little bit more of the right tool for the right job. Um, I don't get to use this much. In fact, uh, should do some maintenance on it this trip while I'm sitting around the fire. But, uh... As soon as I get into the thicker portions, it's still, even though it's got kind of a check through it, I can see that it's still moist, basically through on one side, three quarters of it is still wet, so this is not going to burn. Those other pieces should be fine, I'll split them down.
birds started freaking out. The second I turn on the camera, they go silent. It's getting pretty cold pretty quickly. Prepping my food, prepped my fire. Not as quiet as I would have hoped. I guess I didn't go far enough out. Somebody just came through about five minutes ago. I could hear their truck off yonder in the woods somewhere. And uh, the truck stopped, so I don't know if they're staying for the night or if they're just hanging out or what. But as soon as, as soon as their truck turned off, no, nope, started back up. As soon as their truck turned off, it's when the birds started freaking out. This will be a good spot to remember come summer, uh, or even come later this fall before the first snow, come back on the bikes. Uh, easy enough to get in, plenty of open space, uh, decent spots for tents. Uh, there's flat spots here. There's the main flat spot. Ground is semi-soft. Uh, it's probably gonna start snowing here pretty shortly. I think the very next rains, it's cold enough up here now that now that we're approaching Halloween. Super lame is the sounds of humans up here. I don't know if they're dumping stuff or if they're setting stuff up, but uh, I don't know if the camera is able to pick up the clanking metal noises. This comes to show you, you can't get far enough away. So tonight's no work dinner. We're having chicken fajita bowl. Doesn't get much easier than that. About 14 minutes and we're done. It's only 6.40, but it's dark and cold enough that it's time to light this thing. I've already had dinner. I'll sit here for a bit. I brought a book. This car camping stuff is just not quite the same. You can bring lots of stuff. You don't have to set up a tent. Um, feels pretty lazy. And don't get me wrong, it's really nice. It's good to be out here, but there's something feels a bit cheater about it. So I'm glad I'm in this clearing. Apparently this time of, I don't know if it's this time of the year where it just happens to be the condition of the forest, but there's a decent amount of dead standing that are becoming dead falling that, uh, in this clearing everything's cool but I get the the really cool sounds from out in the in the woods just right next to me here of limbs falling from the top down through the canopy it's almost kind of puts you on edge you hear a noise and you want to make sure that there's nothing jumping out of the bushes 
All right. Good night, everybody. I had my time by the fire. It's 8 o'clock, and it is really cold. It's uh, in the 30s, for sure. And uh, I crawled into the truck to read a book. And the sleeping bag is just so nice and cozy that I'm just going to call it a night. So, good night. I will see you guys in the morning. Bye-bye. Good morning. The sun is coming up. As it turns out, it's 8 o'clock. That was a rough sleep. Uh, right now, it's a, a balmy 35 degrees. Well, I remember to mention them is before I went to bed, I changed into a fresh pair of socks, fresh pair of long john bottoms. Um, just throughout the course of the day, whatever sweating or whatever you did, having nice fresh stuff on helps keep you warmer throughout the night. And uh, right now, I have my pants and my sweatshirt are in my sleeping bag with me getting warmed up. So I will be able to put those on and they'll be nice and toasty. And I'll put my jacket on over the top of my sweatshirt and everything should be good. So helpful tip, change into new stuff just before you go to sleep and take your clothes into the sleeping bag with you so they're nice and warm when you get out. Be a nice temperature buffer from the outside. So, always learning new things. And uh, one of the neighbors, uh, I call them neighbors, the closest campers that came in last night uh, kept starting their truck and I believe they just let it idle all night long for the heater obviously um, but yeah they kept every once in a while they would just rev the motor and at one point at 1.30 I had to look at 1.30 a.m. there was a single uh, I guess it was a gunshot blast uh, it was not a like a handgun pop it was actually a, a pretty decent sized blast and it sounded pretty pretty close by so um, of course, that wakes you up and you start sifting through all the scenarios in your head, whether it was a, an animal encounter, a murder, suicide, who knows what, but it took me a ways to get back to sleep, but uh, I did feel better hearing them rev the motor afterwards, knowing that it wasn't them, or who knows, could have been, but sun is coming up. I'm going to crawl out of my cocoon and see what I can do about coffee and breakfast. I will check back in. Good morning. Good morning again. It's a nice crisp morning. Got lazy man's coffee going. I'm telling you, this, uh, this vehicle camping. Uh, I'm really, really not quite sure it's for me. Uh, I guess I've been spoiled by the rigors of motorcycle camping. That it just seems like too much stuff. I mean, you can bring a lot of extra stuff. You can bring creature comforts. But the odd thing about that is I got so used to having things packed the way they are, everything in its place, that it's now I have to use more brain power trying to figure out where the hell things are, where I've put things. Uh, it's just a more complicated than it has to be. Don't get me wrong, it was really nice to have my cocoon and be able to sleep relatively peacefully throughout the night. Camping is only as good as your neighbors. Unfortunately, I didn't go far enough out. Uh, I was hoping to go to somewhere where, I mean, there's no humans right here immediately, but within earshot there is probably two other campers, and this is technically dispersed camping because there's no facilities. There's nice little fire pits. People have been here before, but there's no fees, no reservations, no facilities, and typically there's more peace and quiet. So this shouldn't, didn't happen to be the case today or this trip, but I guess you can't win them all. 
the nice thing is it's going to start getting colder and all that's going to be left hopefully is the hardcore campers from here on out that hopefully those kind of campers will be more respectful of other people and their surroundings another one of the odd things about vehicle camping is camp is packed I mean there's still a big fat mess inside the truck stuff scattered everywhere but everything's packed at any point um, in the middle of the night if something would have happened if who knows fire um, even this morning I can stay I can go I'm already everything's already packed I just uh, pull out what I need to cook what I need to eat and put it back when I'm done clean up as I go and you're free to go mobile at any point uh, so that's kind of nice. That's a, a positive side of vehicle camping. It would be really nice at some point to find a bug out location like this that's close enough it's not going to be a pain to get to and far enough that I know that it's going to be here. <coughs> <coughs> Brian, take two. Uh, if I don't just end up purchasing my own little piece of land somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, which would be optimal. But until then, I think the goal is to find that spot that you can get to within uh, <clears throat> a decently short drive, maybe a day, number of hours, um, some place that you can bug out to. You know it's going to be there. You know that nobody else is going to be there. I know it's uh, a lot to ask for, but there's a lot of wilderness out here. I think that spot does exist, and I think part of me is kind of still looking for that spot in these little adventures. You drive a couple of hundred miles out into the middle of nowhere, hoping to escape humans, and all it takes is one. That one person not being considerate of other people about the noise. Um, I guess it's not the end of the world, but it's just another lesson that go farther out, a little bit more work, uh, it'll pay off a little bit better. If seclusion is what you want, you have to go farther away from people. Mission accomplished. It was a decent trip. Um, I was able to stare up at the Milky Way, the stars in the middle of the night, and get that kind of calming feeling that is the goal for coming up here, getting away from everybody and getting away from town and... I think I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I'm gonna hang out here, make some coffee, make some breakfast, and just kind of enjoy the quiet and the peace up here. So I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and uh, safe adventures.